you'll see here this beautiful painting by Clara Southern uh, from the National Gallery of Victoria is an, of an old bee farm back in 1900 and I'll return to that in a moment. So what I want to cover, I just wanted to give you a snapshot right up front, which is that climate change adaptation uh, is a very complex undertaking as you'll be uh, starting to really appreciate, I'm sure. It needs to simultaneously address existing uh, systemic problems and vulnerability, as well as the accelerating and unwanted systemic changes that climate change is bringing in. At the same time, we need to do that in a way that's coping with the ever-changing present, which of course the COVID-19 situation has really accentuated, as well as preparing for what comes in the future, which is a combination of both certainties, so the cone of the beautiful graffiti uh, scenario cone there, as well as the uncertainties. And to do all this, it needs to be open-minded, it needs to be deliberate, and it needs more than anything to be systems-minded. And systems-minded means that we need to acknowledge that we are part of those systems and that the transformations required are very much ones in here, uh, whether that in is the institution or our own selves, as well as out there. So systems thinking means a lot of different things, but what I want to emphasize today is that it really means taking into account interrelationships and dynamics. And this is a really uh, sort of common and well-known uh, point, but so often our problem solving uh, habits, our problem solving structures like projects, for example, really force us to move more towards the reductionism end of the spectrum. And that causes all sorts of issues for us. One of them is that we often fail to appreciate that when we're talking about climate change in impacts, we're talking about an intersection of all sorts of uh, climatic changes of very complex types that you have heard about today already, as well as their flow on effects. And all of that is amplifying at different rates and temporalities. But it's the intersection of that with systems and particularly with existing and dynamic and sometimes worsening vulnerabilities. So what that means is that we need to take account of systemic relationships and in fact it's the neglect of those systemic relationships that's arguably got us into this point where we're actually uh, starting to really struggle to catch up. So we've got a catch up game going on as well as trying to deal with climate change. And it's sort of captured by the fact that we're now at a point where in agriculture we're starting to talk about drone or robotic bees which you know, are kind of the, the um, epitome of where reductionist uh, science can actually be extremely useful. But the very fact that we need them, the very fact that we're at the point now where pollinating species are collapsing to such a point that we need to import these things means that actually we're neglecting systemic relationships. We have to ask ourselves why we're at that point in agriculture. We also need to think about the nexus between the sorts of topics we're discussing in this, uh, this series. So that includes those between water, agriculture and biodiversity. And there's a lot of really useful work on the nexus between food, water, energy, and the way that soil and biodiversity is, is in, uh, inflected through all of that. There's a lot of useful work on the interrelationships between the Earth's subsystems, which again is another way of thinking about what we're talking about in this series. And of course, the outcome of those interrelationships is earth system change, which is sometimes discussed in the language of the Anthropocene and the fact that we're now at a planetary threshold unless we act very quickly and very effectively. The other thing about systemic relationships is it means that we need to address the problems with our existing systems. And so some of our systems are too rigid and we can all think of uh, examples of this in our own work, I'm sure. And of course, some of our systems are too loose and fragmented and simply not working. The connections, the conversations that are needed, which this is, uh, forum is helping to overcome, are just not occurring often enough. And what that means is that climate change is threatening to distort and to strain uh, these existing problems. And this beautiful piece of artwork is by an Australian Aboriginal woman in Northwest Tasmania, by Louise Daniels. And it's about her trying to capture the stresses that women in Northwest Tasmania are going through. And it's a beautiful kind of epitome of the existing uh, situation that climate change is intersecting with that we really need to take account of. In very, very different language, the IPCC is also doing its bit to take account of existing strains and distortions and systems. And it's increasingly talking in terms of compound risk and cascading impacts. So in the special report on the cryosphere in the changing climate last year, 
It actually featured Tasmania, this is a global report, it featured Tasmania in 2016 as an example of the sorts of issues that we have to start to deal with under climate change. And it looked at the way in which there was a whole intersection of bad luck type situations that collided in Tasmania around 2015 and 2016. That included the drought and the effects on the energy system, which were worsened when a um, issue with the Bass Link, uh, overuse of the Bass Link uh, caused uh, the cable to dis uh, break and then bad weather meant that that was unable to be fixed for months and months, leading to job losses in the aluminium sector and other sectors in northwest Tasmania, the very place where Louise Daniels is doing her work. At the same time, the storms and the lightning caused uh, fires that many of you might remember which put huge strain on the emergency services, partly because they were also dealing with floods uh, down in the south of the state. At the same time, there was a very uh, severe marine heat wave, which caused huge impacts for the seafood industry, including outbreaks of diseases and viruses. The topic of viruses, of course, brings us back to the present here in Melbourne in our lockdown situation where we need to start to think about scenarios where these things do intersect. And increasingly scientists are starting to do that and think about what happens when you have climate hazard plus pandemic. So just to recap, when we come back to this, we need to look across that entire cone of scenarios sprayed there helpfully on this wall. We need to think about possible futures, both in terms of worst case scenarios, but also in terms of the preferable that are highlighted there with that black arrow. So let's keep our eyes on that black arrow, on that preferable future. And remember that as we do this work here in this forum and in our work uh, further afield, that we remember that we have to be part of the change and remember to adapt and transform as needed.